After you download Copla Mobile from either the App Store or the Android Store, what you want to do is go in, click on Copla Mobile. And if you haven't registered yet, what you need to do is click on register. And then all you have to do is put in your email ID that you want to use, the specific email, anywhere there's an asterisk, first name, last name, and register. After that, you just go into the email ID, put in your email ID, and log in. And then here is the Copla mobile app itself. In the top, you can search for by serial number, part number, model number. You only have to put three digits in and like the model number, for example, and results will pop up. Or you can scan it. So right here, you can hit the scan button. And all of a sudden, in the top corner, you will see the lightning bolt if you're in a dark area. So that opens the flashlight on, turns the flashlight on, and now you can... See how I just quickly scanned the serial number? And now you select that compressor. After you select the compressor, you can see here's all the options. There's quite a few different options for this specific compressor. You need to make sure you pick the right refrigerant. So you go, refrigerant, we're going to do 449. Okay, now you have a 60, uh, 60 hertz and a 50 hertz. Well, we're 60 hertz here in North America, so click on that. So from the contractor point of view, the most important things I'm going to show, there's going to be many more things in this app, but I'm going to show you the most important thing as a technician out there. In mechanical, here it tells you the suction and discharge size, and it says sweat. So you know right now that this is a brazen compressor, okay, sweat compressor. And if you needed a muffler, for an example, on that compressor, you would know the size if you forgot for if if you needed say a discharge check valve and you forgot the size you know it for this compressor the questions i get asked all the time is what does oil charge mean trevor what does the oil recharge mean well the oil charge means that is a oem compressor or a manufactured compressor has more oil in it the oil recharge is a service compressor a compressor you would get from your copeland authorized wholesaler so there's less amount of oil in that service compressor. The next one is the weight, which is great information because now if you're specking a job, you gotta, you have to do a replacement. You know if you need one, two, three guys, if you need a crane or not, and it tells you to wait. So that's super helpful when you're quoting out jobs. The next is electrical, so important. Right here, it tells you all the voltage, all the great information, uh, locked rotor amps. The RLA, rated load amps. If you click on the eye, this is for contactor selection. Twenty, You need a 23.6 amp contactor for this compressor. You click on this one, and this one here is for your breaker and wire selection. And they need to handle at least 21.2 amps. The MCC is the maximum continuous current. That compressor can run before that internal protector will trip. 33 amps. Next is the winding resistance. How amazing is this? It's telling you what line to line is resistance in your windings. This is a three phase compressor, so you should get 1.4 uh, across each line, 1.433. If you get 1.5, 1.4, that's fine. Those windings are perfectly fine. Next is performance. This is very underutilized. You can click on rated performance on standard conditions at zero uh, evaporator 110. This compressor can do 76,000. BTUs at 20 and 120, it can do 16,000 BTUs. Not very important to you as a technician, but if you go into dynamic performance now and you know this is running at uh, 27 evaporator temperature, you're running at 107 condensing temperature, your return gas is 39, you know your superheat is 8, and your subcooling is 6, you calculate these are the conditions this compressor is running in. How much power? 13.2 kilowatts. The mass flow rate of that refrigerant, the BTUs per hour is pushing through there. The actual current amps at those conditions, 16.6. And then down below here, the discharge temperature. You take your temperature probe, put it 6 inches from that service valve or, or 6 inches from the, the compressor on the discharge, and it should be very close to 157 degrees Fahrenheit. Another feature we added was the full performance chart. In here, this is the operation envelope of this compressor. You stay inside these conditions, you're going to have that compressor last a long, long, long time.
You need to understand a few things. You see there's some blue up in the top left corner. That means, if you read at the very top, blue areas are restricted for a head cooling fan. Head fan required. So that means I need a thousand CFM air blown over those uh, that compressor. The top is your evaporating temperature. The left side is your condensing temperature. So at 120, which is 286 PSI and say 15 degrees Fahrenheit, 39 PSI, that compressor can do 103,000 BTUs and runs around 16.6 .6 amps. And the mass flow is 1,600 uh, pounds per hour. Really cool information. Hit the three buttons to go back to the main menu. The next thing is the diagnostics. This feature is such an amazing feature. I wish I had this uh, help when I was in the field. I use it all the time now when I'm in the field supporting contractors. So we'll just throw some numbers in. 55, 225, current draw. We're going to just say 19, and we're going to say the, the actual voltage is 560. We click on Calculate. The current draw from the radiator should be 16.32. The adjusted current draw, because the voltage is lower than uh, 575, so it should actually be running at 16.75. We're running at 19, so we're running high, high, higher amps. Our actual difference is 16.4%. When we're between 15 and 20 percent, definitely a problem. If you're between zero and 10 percent, normal variation. So that means that system's running as efficient and effectively as it should be. But if you get over 10%, there's likely a problem. And we're right now between 15 and 20%, 16.4%. There's definitely a problem. If you click on Troubleshoot, here is a guide to help you start looking at things. Take off the blindfold or chasing your tail. I've done that as a mechanic in the field before. And this is a place where it can give you a starting point. Check the condenser. Is it blocked? Is it a dirty condenser? Is the system overcharged? Is you got non-condensables in your system? Or high suctions due to maybe the bulb or the system is overcharged? Or mechanical concerns? Is the condensing fan operating erratically? Do you have a high oil level? Check the oil level in the compressor. It gives you steps to check. Does it give you the answers? No. But it helps out, fi help you figure out what the problem is. Amazing, 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 amazing. Other things that would be very helpful for you is service parts. So you can find the service parts right off the bat to speed up your job. Now, say I need a gasket. I got a blown head gasket. Well, maybe I want to get a uh, or a valve plate busted, but the compressor is still good. Here's a valve plate gasket kit. Or you can get a valve, uh, or you can get a stator cover gasket, or you can get a, a gasket discharge cover plate. Now you have the part numbers. You can call up your Copeland authorized wholesaler. Say, listen, I need this part number. I need a gasket discharge cover plate for on a 3DS3R17ME. Here's the part number I found: zero two zero four. 048900 can you verify that that is that part and do you have it in stock boom you can now find out if they have it or not then you can call the next wholesaler see if they have it if that first one doesn't from here there's accessories so if you need capacity control if you want to add digital compressor onto that fixed compressor you can just click on it here's the kit 3D discus digital valve plate kit. So you can retrofit that fixed compressor to a digital. Here's the part numbers. Uh, demand cooling. I mentioned that uh, these new blended refrigerants run a lot hotter. So you may need demand cooling if you're doing a retrofit job. Very helpful. And then you can go back and if it's a wiring diagram, we have this one's across the line, so it's a straightforward. But if you're doing a TSK compressor where there's nine leads, it'll show you how to do across the line. Uh, part winding start, where to put those jumpers. It's also on the back of the electrical uh, plate. So that is really some of the main things. If you work in another city, I used to work in tons of different cities, didn't know where the wholesalers were, you can go into where to buy. So it'll pop up your, your search area. You go, you make sure you pick your model. It'll automatically cross-reference to the, the service replacement. And then you hit find wholesaler. And from my my location right now, Carrier, 32 kilometers. Master Group, 32 kilometers. United Refrigeration, 33. Johnstone Supply, 38. 
another Masters 42. And then looking this up, in stock at Carrier, Contact Master, they may have it. Maybe they're just not updating their, uh, with their software. United in stock, Johnstone Supply in stock. Then you can just click on them. I'm just going to click on the first one. It's going to give you directions there. Because if you're in another city, I want to get my job, job done as quick as possible because I have a couple hours drive to get back home. You can call them as well. You just click on the call button and you can call them. And same thing, if you you want to go to Johnstone Supplies, you click it there and it's going to give you directions how to get there. Great features if you're working in a different city. And that is the main features that I would be using as a technician. Down below, you'll see job, support, resources. If you click on more, this is a great feature. If you need some help on Copeland compressors, we have our North American service engineering team. You can just click on it and call. Leave a message if you get an answer. You say, hey, this is Trevor. I'm running into an issue with this small number of compressor. This is what's going on. This is the amps. This is the volt. I put it in the diagnostics feature already. Uh, I'm still running into issues. Can you give me a call back? As much detail as possible when you're leaving that message. So when they call you back, they're prepared. But even before that, if you're running into a system issue, you should be calling that manufacturer of the equipment first. They want to help. I work with all the big manufacturers here in Canada, and they want to help the technician. They want to help you out because they take pride in their equipment, and they want to help you figure out that problem quicker. Most of the issues are system-related issues. I do enough training. I talk with enough people, and it doesn't matter what the compressor manufacturer is. It's system-related issues causing the compressor problems if you're in canada you can click on you will get this number here between eight and four you can directly call us our service engineering team here now if it's after hours you can hit support and we have a 24 5 line so here live chat you can click on live chat this is uh, a 24 5 so monday to friday 24 hours a day so if two o'clock in the morning you're running into issues you got all the information you can't figure it out Shoot us a, a quick message and somebody will get back to you right away. We also have Copeland Technical Specialists. Copeland Technical Specialists are specifically trained men and women across North America who was trained by Copeland how to be an expert on what the issues are with compressors and how to help technicians out there if you're running into a problem in your specific area and this is a good way as a technician to build a relationship with your uh, copeland authorized wholesalers in canada we only have a few right now but in the u.s there's over 500 so you just put your zip code in i'll do a quick example here i'll put my hometown in b zero e one v zero search and bam Keith Doucette, Kirk Controls. You can call him right away and ask him a question. And same as if you're in BC, you put a BC, you will get the contacts in BC um, as well as other province. So you can call him right away, ask him the questions you need, and he will work with you to figure out that problem. The CTSs will work with you. And if they can't figure it out, they will reach out to me here in Canada, and I will help you. And... If I can't help, we'll get the engineering team to help out because we want to make sure you get your job up and running as quick as possible. Other features, if you want to email us and other brands, if you have Dixel, Cooper Atkin questions, ProAc, or E2, or a site supervisor, you can email our, um, email us. The next one is the resources. So important. We totally revamped this section, totally underutilized. Copeland Parts Catalog. In here, this is a great feature. If you're looking for parts, all the parts for Copeland compressors are in here. And from Hermetic to Semi-Hermetics, the CO2 compressors to scroll compressors, quick reference guides. If you need Rotolock adapter uh, uh, parts, if you need digital parts, what's really cool is that you can go in here and find that any part you need or all the common parts, valve plate parts, all of them are here. And this is really how you can really learn mounting parts. Uh, relays, start capacitors, so on, so overloads. All that information is right here, and this is really what the Copeland authorized wholesalers use at your fingertips. If you have a Copelmatic compressor, Copelmatics is our original design. We upgraded back in the 80s to Discus. These are more efficient designs. But if you have a failed 
read compressor right here just a quick example say you have a 4r a3 1000 if you scroll across a 3ds3 f46 ketfc well, depending on your voltage could be a tfd or a tfe that would be the replacement model to put a more efficient compressor in your system in your customer system what you need to be aware of though there are a few models between let's say 10 and 20 percent where there may be adjustments Maybe you need to change the piping configuration. Maybe the feet need to be moved a little bit. This is how you work with your Copeland authorized also and say, listen, I want to upgrade from my old Copeland-Matic reed compressor to the new discus, more efficient compressor. Can you get me the drawings uh, to see if anything needs to be changed? And they can say, no, that's a uh, exact fit. It's going to, you just un uh, unbolt or unsweat that compressor, put this new one in and you are good to go. Okay. That's a great feature that we added there. Uh, the other ones, AE bulletins. If you don't have AE bulletins, this is the gospel for Copeland compressors. Any compressor that you work on that is a Copeland, here is the installation, maintenance, service manuals. I'll just pick on the very top one, 7 to 15 ton ZR compressor or ZP compressor right here. Look, high pressure control. How do I set it? What do I set it for? Discharge line thermostat. What is it? Can I get one? What's the part number? Low pressure control. Discharge uh, check valve. Do I need one or not? All that information's in here. This is a guide to help you. You start reading these, you are going to become an expert at refrigeration. You understand these AE bulletins inside and out. You will become a master at refrigeration. 100%. 100%. Other features that we added, resource check and charge. Here in the check and charge, this is going to help you figure out if you had too much charge in the system or not. We're going to say a 448 uh, system right now. If you click up in the top box here, it's going to give right here. It'll give you the PT chart table. So this is your bubble point. Here's your dew point. There's two different ones here because this is a blended refrigerant. There's glide. You always want to make sure you use dew point for your superheat. You use bubble point for your subcooling because if you use bubble point to try to do superheat, you can potentially flood that compressor out. We'll do a quick example here. TXV, say it's a TXV. We'll do the liquid line pressure. We're just going to say it's 250. Liquid line temp, 90. We'll say required subcooling. We'll say we're looking for 5 degrees. That's what we want. Set. We go calculate. We have too much charge in there. We should remove some of the charge. So this is just a quick app to do that with many, many different refrigerants. Many different refrigerants, as you can see. And the last one that is the most important, you need to start investing in yourself. You want to become a refrigeration professional. You want to become a refrigeration expert. You want to do training on your own time. You know, I've been in the field before. When I first started out, oh, I always needed, I wanted to get paid for training. That is not the case. If you want to become an expert, when I started becoming good at refrigeration is when I started learning on my own time, taking courses, taking class, investing in learning refrigeration, deep diving in to be that expert. So people can call on me. If they ask me a question, I'm not like, uh, uh, I don't know. Here's the answer. And it doesn't, doesn't happen overnight. It takes years and years and years of experience and training podcasts videos on youtube contractor toolbox kit we got tons of free information for you to help skill up to become better at your job the one i want to show you is the hvac training hvac and refrigeration training we have online training so this is training that is free for you so lots of different courses here. If you go all the way down to the bottom, there's videos. A bunch of videos Don Gillis has done for free. You can just watch them as well as Dustin Tillery. You can go into E2 trainings. All this stuff is free to get better at your job. If you scroll all the way up, we have something we call Contractor Toolbox Talk that we've built just for the contractors. Quick trainings to help you out. All coming from this app, Copeland Mobile app. If you don't have this app, you should have it. Here's the upcoming sessions. Here's the previous sessions, refrigeration system components, electronic superheat controllers, digital compressor, semi-hermetic troubleshooting, scroll compressor troubleshooting, E2, uh, and e, sorry, E3 um, trainings. All this stuff at your fingertips from this app. Let's get back into the presentation.